Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. I'd just like to start off by saying sorry for the lack of a video last week. I've been quite sick with vertigo recently and couldn't bring myself to finish editing, but I'm feeling a bit better now, so please enjoy this Christmas Eve episode on early proboscideans in the comfiest way you can. In the modern world of the Holocene, the elephants form a very striking element of African and Asian ecosystems, being Earth's largest terrestrial megafaunal animals. Unique in appearance, with elongated muscular trunks that can be used like a dexterous human hand, large sail-like ears and column-like limbs to support their great weight. In addition to their size and power, elephants are also highly intelligent and social animals to a degree that is unusual for a herbivorous mammal. However, if we go back to the origins of proboscideans, very few of these traits would have been present. Indeed, the earliest members of this order originated on the then island continent of Afro-Arabia during the Paleocene, only a few million years after the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs. Early forms were very modest animals, being quite similar to other closely related paeungulate afrotheres such as hyraxes and basal sirenians. The oldest known proboscidean was the genus Erytherium from the Paleocene of Morocco roughly 60 million years ago, represented by a partial skull complete with both attached and associated teeth. This was a very small animal in comparison with its modern relatives, probably standing only 20 centimeters tall at the shoulder and weighing just 5 kilograms. This is comparable to modern hyraxes in terms of size, with Erytherium almost certainly somewhat resembling these small herbivores in life. For some reason, many depictions of this genus show it to be almost hairless, much like modern elephants. I would take issue with this, given the very small size of Erytherium, and suspect that it was probably at least somewhat furry. The dentition was very basal in comparison to modern proboscideans, with the ancestral placental mammal condition of three incisors, one canine, four premolars and three molars on each side of the upper and lower jaws. The second incisor was already quite large and fang-like, being the precursor of the large tusks present in later proboscideans. Living in a hot tropical ecosystem, it has been suggested that Erytherium may have been a semi-aquatic animal that lived similarly to modern capybaras or a very small hippo. This would make sense given that the Cyrenians are the closest relatives of proboscideans, and both groups may have evolved from a common semi-aquatic ancestor. Another early elephant relative is also known from late Paleocene Morocco, with this being the slightly younger genus Phosphotherium. Recovered from deposits dating to approximately 56 million years ago, this animal was quite similar to Erytherium but was larger, standing at over 30 centimeters or 12 inches tall at the shoulder and weighing about 16 kilograms. This is comparable to an English Cocker Spaniel in terms of size, again being incredibly tiny in comparison to modern elephants. Its nasal passages suggest a presence of a fleshy upper lip, similar to that of rhinos, being something of a precursor to a trunk. Microware patterns on the teeth suggest that Phosphotherium primarily fed on leaves and low-growing shrubs, with the molus being generalised enough that it has been suggested that the genus may have occasionally eaten insects and small vertebrates. In life, this animal would have resembled a hybrid between a hyrax and a pygmy hippo, possibly being semi-aquatic like the latter. If so, it may have spent its days lounging in rivers and lakes to evade terrestrial hyenodont predators while emerging at night to feed. The appearance of early proboscideans such as these in the Paleocene suggests that paeungulate afrotheres diversified rapidly in order to fill niches left vacant by the extinct herbivorous non-avian dinosaurs, also producing the Cyrenians and the vaguely rhino-like embryothopods. While Erytherium and Phosphotherium were small animals, by the early Eocene proboscideans had already begun to expand in size. The 55 million year old genus Dowitherium also from Morocco, is known from fragmentary jaws and teeth, which suggests an animal that weighed between 80 and 200 kilograms, or 180 to 440 pounds, comparable to modern pigs. Like its smaller relatives, Dowitherium possessed low-crowned molar teeth that were well suited to browsing on relatively soft vegetation. Its better known cousin Numidotherium from the Middle Eocene was even larger, being about the size of a tapir and weighing up to 300 kilograms. In fact, this animal would have strongly resembled a tapir as well, being a heavily built browsing herbivore with a short mobile proboscis. This is demonstrated by its relatively short-faced skull and retracted nasal openings, 
being the oldest known proboscidean to somewhat look at least vaguely elephant-like. Numidotherium was probably also a terrestrial genus that dwelt in the lush tropical swamp forests of Eocene North Africa. This has been confirmed by isotope analyses, which have found fluctuating levels of the oxygen isotope O18 in its bones. This is in contrast to other early proboscideans, which show more balanced O18 ratios, indicating semi-aquatic habits. Its feet would have been plantigrade in structure, lacking the fatty pad present in living elephants, indicating that Numidotherium was a slow-moving animal. It possessed small fang-like incisor tusks in its upper and lower jaw, as well as a notable diastema between these and its low-crowned molars. Other Eocene proboscideans remain semi-aquatic, such as the famous late Eocene Morotherium from Egypt and Algeria, present across North Africa between 37 and 35 million years ago. This stout, barrel-bodied animal was a semi-aquatic herbivore that lived in and around river deltas, feeding on soft freshwater plants. This genus may have possessed a flexible upper lip to aid in browsing. Although very modest in size when compared to modern elephants, Morotherium would have been comparable to a pygmy hippo in both mass and lifestyle, weighing up to 235 kilograms or 518 pounds. It was once thought that this genus was ancestral to all later proboscideans, although this is no longer agreed upon by paleontologists, with Morotherium now considered a side branch in elephant evolution. Another late Eocene side branch were the Barytheres, which were the first proboscideans to reach over a ton in mass. The type genus was Barytherium itself, which was a massive and bulky animal that stood up to 5 foot 10 inches tall at the shoulder and weighed up to 2 tons. The four incisor tusks pointed forwards and acted like a set of shears in order to strip vegetation. The nasal bones were slightly retracted, which has led to debates among paleontologists regarding whether this animal possessed a trunk or not. Most modern depictions of Barytherium give it some kind of short trunk, making it look very much like the completely unrelated South American pyrotheres. It also retained plantigrade feet like more basal proboscideans, with isotope analysis revealing that this animal was primarily semi-aquatic. Interestingly, remains suggest that Barytherium was strongly sexually dimorphic, much like modern elephants, where the males are considerably more massive than females. A close relative, Omanitherium, was native to Oman during the early Oligocene and was generally very similar. Despite the large sizes of the Barytheres, however, these animals still did not closely resemble living elephants, looking more like oversized tapirs and living like hippos. By the Oligocene, several proboscidean lineages had emerged that started to look at least more elephant-like, with the most basal of these being the Dinotheres. I've already covered these animals on my channel before, but unfortunately the video was taken down for allegedly violating copyright laws, although I still haven't been given a clear reason why from YouTube. So I'll cover the group again now, but in a more abbreviated form. The Dinotheres first appear during the late Oligocene in the form of the poorly understood genus Chilgotherium from Ethiopia. Known from fragmentary remains, this animal was about the size of a black rhino, weighing up to 1.5 tons and would have been a browsing herbivore. Although smaller than the earlier Barytherium, it was still large for an early proboscidean. Like its later relatives, Chilgotherium probably possessed longer and more pillar-like limbs than more basal proboscideans, showing how elephant relatives were adapting to the drier and more open environments of the Oligocene. This genus would give rise to the more massive Prodinotherium, which was comparable to a modern Asian elephant in terms of size, standing up to 3 meters tall and weighing 4.3 tons at a maximum. This genus originated during the early Miocene in East Africa, being among the first proboscideans to spread into Eurasia once a land bridge opened up roughly 20 million years ago. Primarily a forest-dwelling animal that fed on soft leaves and non-gritty vegetation, Prodinotherium would have been one of, if not the tallest animal across its range, filling a niche similar to the recently extinct Paraceratherium. The distinctive downward-curving tusk present on the lower jaw were utilised for scraping and pulling down branches into the reach of its comparatively short trunk. The molar teeth were superficially similar to those of tapirs, and Prodinotherium and relatives probably chewed using a shearing motion, unlike the grinding action of modern elephants. The genus was successful and widespread, being found across Eurasia from France to northern India, and south into eastern and southern Africa. It disappears from the fossil record by the Middle Miocene, whereupon it is essentially replaced by its descendant Dinotherium. 
This was a highly successful and long-lived proboscidean genus, with up to five species known from the mid-Miocene to the early Pleistocene, existing for about 14 million years. Dinotherium was a massive animal, standing up to 4 meters or 13.1 feet tall, and weighing in at an impressive maximum mass of 13 tons. It would have somewhat resembled living elephants, with elongated pillar-like legs, albeit would have possessed a shorter, stouter trunk and prominent downward curving tusks on the lower jaw. Its massive size likely developed both as an effective predator deterrent and as a means to access high-growing vegetation, while its long legs enabled efficient travel across areas of open savanna. Like its ancestors, Dinotherium was probably a primarily forest-dwelling animal, being a fairly selective browser, unlike some of the more derived proboscideans that lived alongside it. Its range was almost identical to Prodinotherium, stretching across much of eastern and southern Africa, and in Eurasia from France to Thailand. Despite the many key adaptations Dinotheres developed for effective foraging, the continued aridification that progressed throughout the Miocene eventually led to the extinction of the group, which failed to survive without readily available food sources matching their diet. Populations in Western Europe were the first to disappear, followed later by those in Eastern Europe. While European lineages of Dinotherium had gone extinct by the onset of the Pliocene, the genus managed to survive notably longer in its southern range in Africa. The last known Dinotherium remains, assigned to D. bosasi, were found in sediments dating to the Pleistocene approximately one million years ago. All proboscideans more derived than the Dinotheres are generally grouped into a lineage known as the Elephantiforms, which first appeared in Africa before the land connection to Eurasia was formed during the early Miocene. It was once thought that this clade first evolved during the late Eocene, but the origins of the Elephantiforms have been pushed back significantly. Indeed, recent discoveries from 2021 have revealed that the oldest members were around during the Middle Eocene, about 47 to 41 million years ago. It was in this year that Dagbatitherium was named, from the West African country of Togo. A comparatively small animal, it is known only from a single fossil molar, that nonetheless possesses three transverse cusps, a characteristic feature of elephantiforms. This makes Dagbatitherium by far the oldest member of the group that would later give rise to modern elephants. Its place of origin in Togo is also significant, as the vast majority of early proboscideans have been found in North Africa, which indicates that these animals were widespread across the continent during the Eocene. Later elephantiforms, such as Pheomia and Paleomastodon, were larger than Dagbatitherium, but were still small when compared to modern elephants and Dinotherium, being about as tall as adult humans at the shoulder. These would go on to great success during the Oligocene, and especially in the Miocene, when elephantiforms would journey out of Africa for the first time. However, we will have to leave the evolutionary history of these animals for a future video. Thanks for watching everyone! The next episode will be covering the Soaring Pelagornithids, a mysterious group of very large seabirds with the longest wingspans of any avian family. Until then, happy holidays to you all, and to all a good night. Cheerio!